Projectors are used in photography and videography quite a bit when it comes to making very expressive, interesting artwork. And it's something that's very easy to implement here in 3D. What's cool about projectors is that it allows you to have this very interesting glow and creative control over adding something that otherwise would not be there normally, which creates a very cool avenue for expression and just cool sci-fi looking stuff. So I went ahead and created these two artworks with the idea of trying to find a creative way to use projectors in 3D. And today I'm going to show you how I created those and how I created the projectors. Now, before we go on, if you're a real-time materials user, I just added a bunch of new materials in the add-on. You can go over to Blender Market and check those out. They're available now. Go ahead and uninstall the old version, reinstall the new version, including the Asset Browser version if you like to use that. A bunch of really cool wood materials, some concrete, some metal, some really cool stuff there with a lot of control on those. And again, updates are totally free. If you wanna get the add-on, you can check that out as well. That's gonna be linked in the description and we will continue onto the projectors. All right, so the first thing I did was I just ran into Blender and started quickly creating a lot of different assets. Very simple geometry. Uh, quick tip is using text and dingbat fonts. Uh, a lot of really cool opportunities just to very quickly get assets that you can stitch together. So I went ahead and just did as many ideas as possible and saved them about 1200 by 1200 pixels. And composition, creative tip on creating the assets, kind of if you're arraying them, make them more spaced out. I found those to look better on the projectors than much really close together assets. Next, I went into Premiere and I stitched them all together. If you don't have Premiere, use Blender Sequence Editor. It's free and relatively easy to learn how to use. I made each clip about half a second long. Each makes a very quick edit, makes it look very cool. Now, let me show you how to create the projector that we're gonna be using in these artworks. So go ahead and import a area light and go over to the spread and bring that down to zero. Now hit control T with the node wrangler add-on enabled, comes with Blender by default. So you can add that texture setup. Go ahead and use object and select the area light in that object dialog. Now make sure you know how many frames long your animation is. In my case, it's about 126 frames long. Then go ahead and specify those frames in the image texture, click on cyclic and auto refresh and use clip. And then in the mapping node, go ahead and center out your video however you want it to be. You can also use this node setup to use the image texture as kind of a mask so you can either reveal other videos or use it just to create different colors with an emission node. It gives you more control so you're not kind of beholden to the one color you picked when you were creating the assets. Now the easy part is over, creating the projector, that's, that's easy, but figuring out how to use these projectors in a really cool way, that's a bit more difficult. So for this first artwork, I used a lot of those portraits that I was using in my R&D research as my inspiration for this. So I went ahead and purchased this model on CG Trader. That's gonna be linked in the description. I'm not great with character modeling, so I went ahead and just got something that was relatively photorealistic right off the bat. I imported that into Blender, and then I also pasted my projector into Blender. You can actually copy from one project file and paste into another. That's why I said kind of save that file. And then I went ahead and positioned it how I wanted on the face and part of the body. Makes a really cool composition. First, I went ahead and added some volume. You don't need the volume, especially if your computer really can't handle it, but if you're fine waiting on some render times, it's gonna create a really cool effect. Then I also created a really bright key light, made it really specific, and then made a much bigger area light to fill out those shadows. And by key light, the key light is an area light. I just called it that. Don't get confused on the titles. It just means it's very specific and bright, creating a really cool silhouette. I wanted to create just kind of a sci-fi look. So I went ahead and got a plane, made it metallic, no roughness. Essentially, I made a mirror, and then I just kind of rotated it till I liked how weird it created the composition. Just kind of made it other, not natural, and you know, photorealism is not the prompt here. So let's make it cool. Then I went ahead and rendered it, and we are done. That is the first artwork. I love it. It just makes it look awesome with that projector, more than just a portrait, but now it's this expressive, cool looking sci-fi render. Now for the next artwork, I wanted to use it on more of a landscape or almost a product render environment. So that was my inspiration for this one. So I went ahead and downloaded some rock assets and I composed them in kind of a setup that I thought was gonna look really good. I then created a soft gradient background with an emission and a gradient texture. And then I went ahead and added my area light as my bigger establishing light. 
added a glass object, and then when I added roughness, it, it combined with that gradient background, made this really cool looking alien effect is the only way I can describe it because I'm not good at describing things. And then I went ahead and I added in my area light, I mean my projector light, to create this very, very cool look. What's great about these projectors is they take kind of a basic scene and elevate it to a much more expressive, cool scene. And that's kind of the power of those. And there you go. That is how I created these projectors in Blender. And it's so fun, it's so easy, and you can do it on anything really. And it just allows you to have much more artistic expression in your renders. Uh, they kind of lean more towards sci-fi, but who cares? But thank you guys for watching. I hope this unlocked another creative outlet for you in Blender, or even if you're using other programs, this idea kind of continues. So thank you for watching. Again, if you want to check out real-time materials and get that update, that is going to be linked in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.